Hey everybody, just a quick video today about hard drive speeds. This is something that I've been really interested in lately because of running some of my big sample libraries inside Logic Pro on my Silicon Mac Mini. And uh, I had it on a kind of an archival type drive and uh, wasn't fast enough. So I was trying to figure out which drive to use that would be acceptable. And so I was reading online. I found this Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Test Utility. It's available for free in the App Store. It's really designed for video stuff. You can see here about the, the options for showcasing if it'll work with ProRes or Cinema DNG or 10-bit uncompressed video at different resolutions. And so I was... Uh, you know, it really was recommended that this could be an option to figure out uh, your actual disk speeds, not just uh, the things that they're publishing on their websites or in the documentation for your drive, because those aren't always accurate. And what we do is with the stress tests, uh, it's recommended to use the five gigabyte file. That's uh, what they're going to be doing is copying that, uh, writing it, reading it and seeing how long it takes. So then all you really need to do is select the drive you want to use. And here's my big archive drive. This thing is uh, four terabytes. And I put a lot of stuff on here uh, just to keep it there, uh, mostly as a backup. But it's uh, not like a solid state or anything fancy. It still has uh, the spinning drive portion. But we're going to start this speed test, and you're going to see that we get about uh, 30 MB for the write, and about that, or maybe slightly more for the read. So, if I was working with video, you would see that I could read and write reliably, uh, let's see, essentially... 1080 in terms of uh, just an HD format. Weirdly enough, there's one that popped up here, but uh, it's, well, there we go. It's filled in a little bit with uh, the 1080p. So we could do some HD stuff, which means that we can do a, a decent amount of audio, but it's not going to be like amazing. If we have to do a bunch of audio recall with um, a sample library, a big orchestral bank or something, it's not terribly impressive. Now, I do have, and this is something at one point I was thinking, you know, this would be great. Uh, let's get one of the, you know, the SSD solid state drives. And uh, that's going to fix all the problems, of course. Uh, this one is, uh, I can't remember, this may be a Kodak drive. Um, but you're going to see that it's not terribly faster it is better for reading by some, and it's better for writing, but it's not terribly faster than either one of the, uh, than the original drive I showed you. And so uh, it's not an amazing step up. And so let's switch now to the third drive that I've currently got connected. This one is this Glyph one terabyte, but it's a RAID style drive. And this is where I have right now my orchestral banks. And this is why you'll see in a second. Uh, it's like 10 times faster for writing. Yeah, just over. And the reading is uh, similar, about 10 times faster. So now we can actually get access to all of our files a lot quicker and this is important when we're doing a big orchestral bank because uh, if it's going to read the files, it's just going to uh, have a little bit in the RAM and read the rest. And so we need something that's going to be able to do that. So this Glyph uh, drive, I'll put this up on the screen in a second just so you can see which one that is. But to put this all in comparison, I'm going to go to my desktop of my Mac Mini M1 Silicon Mac just to show you what this is like, and uh, this is the one time that I uh, regret not getting a bigger drive, because when I hit start here, you're going to see 
not it's not a hundred times better but it sure is getting close and so instead of the 30 MB or the 300 we're looking at 2000 uh, three or four hundred or two hundred there when it settles and then the read it's almost three thousand so we're looking at incredible speed coming off of the main drive uh, and that's just it's a whole different architecture obviously you're not going through an external cable or something and, and so you're you're not limited by that the one thing i want to show you right now let's switch over to my finder for a second and I'm actually going to eject these two drives. And now I'm going to pull this over because I have different cables connecting these. I'm going to switch the cables. So now my extreme SSD is back. And I'm going to come in here, target drive, extreme, and I'll start this. And so it certainly looks, well, the read and write are performing differently. Let's stop that for a second. I'm gonna go back to the other cable for one second. The point here being that uh, it does matter how you connect these up to your computer as well. So I'm going back to the original cable for the extreme. Let's just do this again. Extreme, open. And so it was three or four times better writing uh, with a different cable. And the reason that is because the cable that it's connected to currently uh, is not a USB 3 cable, even though it's a USB-C, uh, so it has the USB-C connector, it's not a, a USB 3 data through port on there. And so that's a huge limitation. You may think you have the right cable because the connector fits, but that doesn't mean you actually have the right amount of data going through it. So you can actually maximize... Uh, some of your drives by making sure you have the right cables. Uh, you can also get a faster drive like the Glyph. And so this Glyph, uh, it's, um, let's see if I can figure out the actual number on it for you. Okay, so this is the drive that I had the best for the external drives. Uh, it's the one terabyte USB 3.1 Type-C external SSD. So there's two 500 gigabyte SSD drives that are rated together. Uh, and that gave me one of the best uh, performances of my external drives and was capable of all the video formats and is clearly capable of audio stuff. And uh, this, I mean, it works great. But I had to have the right cable. I had to, you know, make sure that that was the, not just the right connector, but also the USB 3. Once I had that, then uh, it just reads all my files super nice. I can load up anything and it instantly plays, or not instantly, but near instantly plays. It, uh, it doesn't have any issues with buffering or having to wait for files to be read. So all of my big libraries go on this, and then all of my other ones go on the, the smaller drive uh, when connected to a, a USB 3 cable. Uh, because you don't want to have the faster drives hooked up to a slower cable and then not be able to read it very well. Okay, just wanted to explain this in terms of how this works with logic and why it's important not only to manage your drives, but to make sure you have the right type of cables and that everything's working together. I uh, hope you're having a great weekend. We're about to get uh, two or three feet of snow in Denver this weekend, a big snowstorm. So we're going to hunker down and just do some cool things in the studio and not have to worry about driving around the city in a bunch of snow. Uh, but happy winter and I will see you next week.